check. Check. Hello. I think it's okay. That's okay. Testing. Testing. No, they put... Good morning, Academy. Please settle down as we start our program this morning. But before we start, please let us pray. Dear kind loving Heavenly Father, Lord, um, please guide us as we have our week of prayer. Lord, please bless the participants. For your small of our sins, in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Mayong buntag sa inyong tanan, mga kaigsuunan. Good morning, Academy. I'm Therese, our grade 11 student from the Emerald section. And I'm Jeff, a grade 12 student from section G. And welcome to the third session of our week of prayer. Have you been blessed so far with the week of prayer? My partner Jeff and I had been blessed too. Yesterday's topics were really great, isn't it? That's true. It reminds us that no matter what we are in circumstances, we should always praise God. Clarice, let me ask you something. Are you happy today? Of course, Jeff. How about you? I'm happy as well. Especially that God showered each one of us with bountiful blessings of family, friends, peace, and love that we enjoy every day. Who among you guys are excited for our session this morning? The parts and the participants of this morning's session will be flashed on the screen. But there is a slight change in our participant. Instead of Martina Bujia, it is Rio Clarence Bico who will give the closing prayer. But before we take our seats, let me read you a passage from the Bible that can be found in the book of Proverbs 12.20. It says here that, Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. I hope we continue to listen attentively during this third session of our week's spiritual emphasis. Again, Again welcome. welcome.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our third session of Week of Prayer. Before we start our inspiration, let's all bow our heads for our prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the another morning that Thou hast given to our life. As we sing praises to Your holy name, may Your angels sing with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our first song, let's sing Praise Him, Praise Him. I'm inviting everyone to please sing. second song let us sing to so sweet to trust in Jesus Yes. 
opening song, let's all start singing our theme song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Shall we all near for our Acts prayer? Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come to you, humble and contrite. We know, O Lord, you are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of all lords. You hear us when we need you, and you answer us when we ask. You never cease to fail us, for we know you are all, our Almighty Father. Hear our prayer now, dear Lord.
Lord, we are sinners. We are sinners to our friends, to our teachers, to our family. And even though it is sad to hear, we are sinners to you, O Lord. Most of the time, we choose worldly things over you, O Lord. So now, as we kneel and confess our sins, O Lord, may you hear our prayers and forgive us from all of our sins. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you and listen to your word once again. Lord, here are your children bowing down before you. May you please accept their thanksgiving and for everything that you have done for them. Our Father who art in heaven, we come humbling ourselves before you, Lord. Lord, all of us have prayer requests in this room. We want to, to lift up all of our supplication to you this morning. We know that you're going to answer all of them in accordance to your will, Lord. We ask you to provide every need that we have. And may you please help us understand the beauty of following your Son, Jesus Christ. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray.
I greet you again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. I don't know how you feel this morning, but I feel like there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that God wants to speak to us again this morning. And as we continue looking at the beauty of following Jesus, I want to invite everyone to stand. Everyone, I want to invite you to stand with me. Let me invite everyone to stand. I just want you to get hold of your Bible with you. If you have a Bible, just hold it with you. And then raise your Bible. Let me see your Bible. Just raise it up just like this. Just raise your Bible with me. Don't worry if you didn't bring your Bible, but if you brought it, just raise it with me. Okay, I can see just a few Bibles. All right, repeat after me. The Bible is the divine word of God. If we read it and believe it, we shall receive eternal life. Now open with me to our text this morning in John chapter 14. Verse 27. 
John chapter 14, verse 27 is our text this morning. John 14, 27. The Bible says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This morning I'll speak to you by God's grace on a subject, unlimited peace. Unlimited peace. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we are listening. May you speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. As we, thank you so much, thank you. As we talk about uh, enjoying unlimited peace this morning, I want us to answer a question. How much do you trust Jesus? How much do you trust Jesus? Maybe some might say 60%. Maybe 50%, maybe 60%. I don't know how much you trust Jesus. But this week I'm sharing with you the beauty of following Jesus. Not just what I have read, but what I have experienced in my journey with Jesus Christ. There was a young boy who told his father, he said, Father, I want to begin my own business. The father said, no, son, you are very young. The son said, no, daddy, I can do it. I want to have my own business. And the father said, all right, son, I will teach you one lesson that will guide you as you do your own business. And the father said, son, come, come with me. I want you to climb the tree. And the son said, Father, all right. And the son began climbing the tree. And when he was somewhere halfway, the father said, climb higher. The son said, Daddy, what are you doing? No, no. Do you trust me? He said, yes. Okay, climb higher. And when the son had gone a little bit far, the father said, okay, son, I ask you again, do you trust me? The son said, yes, of course, Papa, I trust you. Now, I want you to jump from there and come down here. The son said, no, Papa, I will fall down. I might be broken. The father said, do you trust me? He said, yes, Papa, I trust you, but I cannot jump. I'm afraid to jump. The father said, if you trust me, I will hold you. And the son said, all right, Papa, I will jump, I will jump. And then the son said, Papa, please hold me. And he jumped from that fall and said, Papa, please hold me, hold me. And as he came down, the father ran away. And the son fell down. And he was crying. And he said, Father, why did you do this? And the father said, that is lesson Number one in business, never trust anybody. If you want to be a good businessman, never trust anybody. But as we look at the beauty of following Jesus, one important principle to enjoy our journey with Jesus is to learn to trust in him. And the Bible invites us not to trust him just a little bit, not 60%, not 90%, not even 99%. But the Bible says, Proverbs 3, 5, say it for me. What does it say? Proverbs 3, 5, it says, You shall trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not just a little bit with your heart, but he says, you shall trust in the Lord. Trust in him with all your heart. Remember one young man was in the exam 
room and he was writing something and he forgot. And he tried to scratch his head and he could not remember the answer. So he looked up and said, Lord, Tabai Gobe, I can't remember. And as he asked the Lord, the answer came. And when he got it, he said, Oh Lord, I own a lung. I have got it already. How much do you trust in Jesus? I remember I was in one class and I got so tempted. Our exam was about writing the 27 fundamental beliefs of the Adventist church. That's all. Just go, memorize them, come and write them in the exam. And because I was not so sure, sure with my memory, I wrote all the 27 fundamental beliefs on my hand. I use, I, I, I use a black pen because if I write, you cannot see if I write it here. So I write all over here the 27 fundamental beliefs. And I went to, I had a short sleeve and I was comfortable, no one can see. But before we began the exam, our professor said, I'm going to pray for you, all of you. And we made a circle and he began praying and said, Lord, please help my students. Some of them have a bad habit of writing exam answers on their hands. And I, I opened my eyes. I, I didn't wait for the prayer to be finished. I knew he's talking about me, but I don't know how he knew it. And he said, Lord, help them. Touch their hearts that they will not copy. Before the prayer could finish, I went outside and I removed all of them from my hand. How much do I trust in Jesus? To help me, not only in my exam, but in my daily life. How much do I trust him when I encounter family problems? How much do I trust him in my daily walk with him? He invites us to trust in him 100%. The beauty of trusting in Jesus and finding peace. I was at Ayas and I learned of a group of students, it, it is a family, they came to Ayas, they didn't have money, they didn't have a sponsor, but when they came, they were given a paper to fill in, and there was a place that you fill in, who is your sponsor? And they wrote their GC. So, the office thought that the general conference was their sponsor. So they went and they contacted the general conference, the office contacted the general conference, and when they contacted the general conference, they found out that the general conference did not know them. So they invited them and said, you said GC is your sponsor. We asked the general conference, they don't know you. And the student said, we don't mean general conference, we mean God cares. God cares is our sponsor. We believe as we stay here, God will provide. And how I pray that this will be our mentality. Wherever we are, that I know God cares. I live by GC. God cares and he will provide. You shall trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it is a lesson that Jesus calls us to trust in him with all our hearts. Now, there was a time when my church pastor back home in Uganda, he challenged me and said, Dan, why don't you go to the Philippines and find ways of, of studying there? I said, Pastor, I don't have money. And he said, well, you can find ways to get money. The Lord will provide. So my pastor said, let us solicit. So I went to my friends. And I asked them, please, can you give me some money? Contribute for me. I want to go to the Philippines. I want to be a missionary. So they gave me. I went to my church members. I asked them. I went to different churches. I needed 2 million Uganda shillings. So I went even to the little kids, my friends, please. Can you go to your parents and tell them I want some money? And they went and they would give me 5 pesos, 10 pesos. I collected everything. And when I went home, after about one month, I had one million shillings. I needed one million more. 
my daddy was able to put money together and my mama and I had two million to buy my ticket and I bought my ticket that night my family surrounded me they were very excited because I was the only first person that time to be able to use an airplane we used to see our planes from far and we wondered how it, it feels like it but that night my family surrounded me said wow Dan you're gonna be up there in the sky please don't forget us and I was saying bye bye to everybody but that night there came a call from the Philippines from my friends and they said Dan you're coming to Philippines there is something missing in your document you did not get a visa nobody had told me they, they told me I need to get a passport so I had my passport but there was no visa inside and my friend said Dan don't come if you don't have visa and I thought about it I have collected money from the brethren I have collected money from my friends if I stay here and they see me the next day they will put me to prison and I said instead of dying in prison I would rather go and die somewhere else so I told my friend I am coming they prayed for me and I began a journey coming to the Philippines but when I arrived in China in Hong Kong I was stopped at the airport and they look at me and they ask me sir where is your visa I say I have no visa I have only passport they say you travel without visa I said and all the people were checked in and they stopped many soldiers came and surrounded me and they checked my my bag they, they, they checked my clothes they thought I was maybe a kind of drug dealer traveling without visa and I tried my best to smile not to look like a drug dealer so they interviewed me and they were speaking Chinese I could not understand my my body was shaking in my mind I knew now I'm going back to Uganda they will put me in prison and I said Lord please I was praying there and as the soldiers surrounded me they brought big machines and they put my passport in there they look at me again and they talk in Chinese but I was praying and after a while two soldiers said please follow me and I said sir going where to Uganda or to Philippines don't ask just follow me so I had to follow then they took me on a, 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 a an office where I would get another ticket when I was there the woman asked me in there say brother where do you want to sit uh, on the sides in the center or on the other end I say mom going where to Uganda or the Philippines and she said going to Philippines I say oh salamat and I said mom it does not matter where I sit whether on top at the back in front as long as I'm going to Philippines and so she was able to put me uh, on, 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 the, on the seat on the window and I want to let you know the soldiers these two soldiers they escorted me one was in front the other one was at the back they were taking me and I looked like a government official I was so happy as, as I walked nobody at the airport had soldiers only me had soldiers going with me taking me to check in to proceed to the Philippines God is good my friends and I said Lord I thought I'm going back to Uganda I have no visa I have only passport it is impossible that I could make it through but God did not only make me away he gave me bodyguards and we walked a long way and I tried to walk also like a government official just enjoying with the soldiers going all around me they took me up the gate and they sent me off and I boarded the airplane the only thing they did not salute me but I want to let you know that God cares so much that he does things that seem impossible in our lives and you've got to realize this and and learn 
to move towards trusting God with all your heart. He's the God of impossibilities. In the Bible, we have a story of a woman in Mark chapter 5. And from verse 25, it's a story of a woman who was sick. The Bible says she was sick for 12 years. She had suffered so much. The Bible says she had gone to every doctor. The Bible says she had spent all that she had. But the Bible says also that she did not get any better. And she went to these doctors. They were not just medical doctors. These were quick doctors. There were doctors that you go to and say, what's your problem? And they say, oh, my problem, I'm suffering. I have a backache and there is no cure. And then the doctor would say, okay, first of all, bring a red chicken. And then hold it and cut off the head and go at your house and turn around ten times and say, heal, 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 heal. These were the kind of doctors that the woman went to. But nevertheless, there was no change. But one thing I like about this woman is that even when she was sick for one year, two years, three years, twelve years, she was not willing to give up. Sometimes we, had small, we have small challenges in our lives and we feel like we want to die. But 12 years of being sick and she still believes there is hope somewhere. She's not willing to give up. She believes I will find a way out. And as I read about this woman, I read, I understand never give up in your life. As long as the Lord leads you breathe, there is always hope for each one of us. No matter what kind of challenge that you're going through, there is always hope somewhere. Funny story is told of a man who went on a bridge and he wanted to die. Why? He had so many children. And he said, Lord, I want to die. I cannot manage all these children. But as he was standing there, another man came. He wanted to commit suicide. And said, what's your problem? I have no children. I also want to die. Someone has no children wants to die. Someone has so many children want to die. And this is the kind of world that we are living in. But I like that this woman, even when she had suffered for 12 years, she believed there is hope somewhere. And she tried her best because as she had gone through all doctors, one day, she heard about Jesus. And she heard how Jesus had healed people. She heard how Jesus had resurrected the, the, the dead. She heard how Jesus had made the blind to see. She heard about how Jesus had made the lame to walk. And she said, I will not give up, not until I have seen Jesus. She was sick. She was weak. She was dying. But she said, I must look for Jesus. I must find Jesus. Because I know if I find that Jesus, he will heal me. Have you ever decided, I want to search for Jesus. I want to find Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to be acquainted with Jesus. And she begins the wonderful journey looking for Jesus. In her weakness so she goes and she she finds Jesus by the lakeside but then Jesus was surrounded by so many people she was weak and tired but she, she tried her best because she just wants to touch Jesus and all of a sudden there came a man the Bible says his name is Jairus Jairus was a ruler in that community a respected man and he came straight to Jesus and said Jesus I want to invite you to my house the Bible says Jairus was he was an official but this woman no one knew her no one cared about her no one knew that she was suffering 
She had no position. She had no money. She had nothing. But Jairus, he was known. He was respected. So he could come to Jesus straight with confidence. And sometimes maybe you are here and nobody cares about you. You are not talented. You have no gift. It seems you don't even exist. No one notices you. And, and this woman was in this kind of situation. The Bible does not even give us her name. It seems that those who have money can survive. It seems that those who have connection can survive. So Jairus brings Jesus and said, Jesus, come to my house. Good for him. And Jesus went with Jairus. And as they are going, Jairus is saying, Jesus, please come quickly. My daughter is dying. Come quickly. My daughter is dying. But in that midst of people walking around and following Jesus, there was this woman. Nobody knew that she was sick. Nobody knew that she was dying. You know, this is a very big church. And I cannot know really who is suffering. But there might be somebody here who is saying, Jesus, I need you. There might be somebody here who is having a problem that not even teachers can understand. Who cares about that person? How these people are following Jesus? This woman strives and she tries her best and she's weak. She's sick, she's dying. And in that time when she had a privilege, she stretches out and she touched the clock of Jesus. Then the Bible says, immediately, the sickness that had troubled her for 12 years, just by the touch of Jesus, touching Jesus, the Bible says, immediately, she felt that she had been healed. No doctor could cure that. No human being could cure that. But simply by touching Jesus. Oh, I love following Jesus. Because when you follow Jesus, there is nothing impossible with him. So this woman felt that right away, his sickness was gone. I want to let you know, it was her sickness that helped her to see Jesus. It was her problem. You've got to learn to thank God for problems. It is through your challenges that you can be led to the Savior. But what I like is, as soon as she touched Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus was walking. When this woman touched him, Jesus stopped. Nobody knew this woman. Nobody cared about her. She was not known in the community. But when she touched God, God stopped. Can you imagine a nobody? No one recognizes her in society. But when she touched God, God stopped. The reason why Jesus stopped, it is because Jesus cares about each one of his children. What do you say, amen? Somebody might not know you. Your teacher might not know you. Your parents might not be so well acquainted with you. But Jesus is acquainted with each and every one of us. He knows what we do at night. He loves us. He knows what we want to eat. He knows what we are suffering from. He knows what we do every moment. He watches over us every moment. He cares about us more than anybody can care about us. So I have to follow Jesus because he cares. He stopped. And Jairus says, Jesus, come on. That woman is nobody. My daughter is dying. But Jairus had to learn a lesson. That if you want to be blessed by Jesus, you've got to learn to wait. One man looked up and said, let me talk to God. And he said, Lord, for you, how much is one million pesos? And God replied and said, one million pesos? To me, it's just like one peso. Huh? One million pesos for you is like one peso? Say yes. And the man again asked, how much is 1,000 days to you? God said, ah, just, that, that's like one day. And the man looked up and said, Lord, can you give me one million pesos? 
And God replied and said, okay, no problem. Wait for one day. And when God says wait for one day, it might mean 1,000 years. You've got to learn to when God says, I'm going to give you this. He means just wait. It might mean two years, 20 years, 60 years, but for sure God will keep his promise. So Jesus stopped and he turns around and the Bible says he looked for this woman. And when he found this woman, you know the story, the Bible uses the word Jesus looked to this woman as if he cared so much and indeed he did. And he said, let, let me... So I, I, I will not touch her because just stand right here. So, so Jesus turns around and when he found this woman and he said smile put, smile and he says daughter I love you so much and this was Jesus speaking now when you read what the Bible says Jesus he did not this word daughter was very affectionate that it meant like darling it meant like sweetheart I care so much about you what is your name Miel. Miel. Jesus loves you and she, he cares about you thank you so much Jesus was saying to this woman Miel, nobody knows you maybe you're not talented you don't even come to the stage to sing you have never appeared anywhere you are not famous but I want to let you know I know you so well and I know that you've been suffering and now Jesus says daughter your faith has made you well and he says go in peace this was real peace our text said my peace I give you this is the peace of Jesus nothing else can give us this peace having a laptop cannot give us this peace having a car cannot give us this peace having a nice house cannot give us this peace this kind of peace that Jesus gives it comes only from him and this kind of peace when Jesus gives us this peace it is called a uh, shalom it is a complete peace nothing can take away this peace from us even when we are sick this peace is there even when we are suffering this peace is there even when we are dying this peace is there because it comes only from Jesus Christ following Jesus you get to enjoy unlimited peace in him I remember one time our uh, grandparent was dying and you know in Africa sometimes uh, in my country Uganda when an old man is dying all the grandchildren want to come home you know why because that's a very important time when Lola or Lola is dying it is time to, to, to be together and to comfort, but also it is time to begin sharing things. As the Lola dies, he will say, Ah, happy to come to my then you say, oh Lola, I call up, I hope I call up, I call up. It is time to share things now. And sometimes it's so that things of this world are so meaningless. When we die, we leave them all. But as this man was dying, he said, when I die, I just want you to bury me behind my house. Because even when I'm dying, I know that my name is written up there in the book of Jesus. And I know that when Jesus comes, he will call my name. And when you bury me outside, don't come near my grave because 
when Jesus calls my name someday, I'm going to come out of the grave, jumping out to meet my Jesus. He was dying, but he had peace. He was dying, but he could smile. Why? He had followed Jesus all his life, and he had this kind of peace that not even death can take away. This is the peace that Jesus wants to give you. This is the peace that Jesus wants you to enjoy. That not even a low grade can take away this peace. Not even sickness can take away this peace. This peace remains with you. Even when you die, you die with this peace. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the beauty of following Jesus Christ. Embrace the peace of Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. playing keep playing I want to make an appeal this morning I wonder if there's anybody here who is suffering I wonder if there's anybody here who is sick 
and you need a special prayer, I want to pray with you this morning. You're here and you're facing a burden that you want to put at the cross of Jesus this morning. There might be someone there. I want to open this altar for you. I want you to feel free and come and stand ready. I want to pray with you. Lord, I'm suffering. Lord, I have a burden. It could be a financial burden. It could be a physical burden. It could be any kind of burden. And you want to pour it at the feet of Jesus this morning. The altar is open for you. If you want to come, I'm inviting you. I will pray for you. I will pray for you. I want to pour my burden out to Jesus this morning. I don't know what that is. But you want to give it up to Jesus. May God bless you. Maybe you're sick and the doctors have said there is no cure. I want to pray with you. Maybe you're suffering from, from something that we don't know. I want to pray with you. Maybe it's a kind of challenge that is going on in your life and it is killing you and you want to give it up this morning. I want to pray with you. And we'll wait for you. I want to surrender your life to God this morning and say, Father, I, I commit myself. I give this burden to you. Maybe it's an exam that you're about to take. It is something that is, it, it is, it is affecting your life. Maybe it's a big temptation, whatever it is. Come and give it to Jesus this morning. I want to pray with you and you're seriously giving it up to Jesus. He has promised he will take all our burdens. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. How sweet to trust in Jesus. Those who are still coming, just give them way. May God bless you. We'll pray together this morning. I want to invite the chaplain to come and let's pray together and uplift these young ones in the hands of God. And I pray that God will give you courage to go through whatever you're going through and may he give you hope and may he give you strength that you will be successful and triumphant and be able to give glory and honor to him. May God bless you. I can see some are still coming. We're going to pray together this morning. And a very special, we uplift all of you in the hands of God, most especially those with special burdens, asking the Lord to do something in your life this morning that like he did in the life of this woman who was very sick. Will you kneel with me, those who have come, and the rest you, you can just bow your heads as we pray together. Would you just kneel with us, those of you who come to the front, and we'll spend some moments in prayer this morning. You pray for Let us pray. Our great God, loving Father in heaven, We bow before you. We kneel before you, Father in heaven. You have shown once again to us this morning how much you love and care for each one of us. For a fact, Father in heaven, you have sent your only son to die on the cross for each one of us. He suffered and died with the most painful of death that is possible for a human being so that each one of us or any one of us will have forgiveness of sin, Father in heaven, and have the hope of eternal life. There is with that, Father in heaven, we now understand, though however inadequately, that when it comes to our salvation, there is nothing impossible, Father in heaven. Yes. Nothing could hinder us, could, is, could, is, could is stop us from being saved, but our very own decisions. And so also, Father in heaven, we also believe, we know and understand that the suffering and every painful thing that we are now experiencing all are the result of sin. And also, by your grace and by your power, all of these things could be taken away from us. So, Father in heaven, we pray this morning, if any of our students, our teachers, everyone who are here, bowed before you, praying before you, pleading before you, 
any ailment, emotional pain, suffering that we are experiencing, we lift them all to you, Father in heaven. Take them away from us by your provisions, by your grace, by your power. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your children. Thank you that you're speaking to us. Thank you that you want to set each one of us free. This morning, some of your children have left their seats and they have come to the front with burdens. And they believe that you are able, Father, to carry all their burdens. Some have simple, some have very complicated burdens and that not any one of us can even understand. Father, I would like to pray for those who are sick, suffering from diseases that seem to be incurable in the eyes of men. I pray that you will heal them in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Not as we will, but as you will, oh Lord, because we know that there is no disease that is beyond your power to cure. And thus we read this about this woman as you, you cured him immediately, Father, I also lift these ones in your hands. And I pray for their parents, their relatives also might be suffering from incurable disease and, and some of these are their sponsors. Father, I pray that you will set them free in the name of Jesus. Yes, Make miracles in our lives, Father, and help us to have even stronger evidence to trust in you. Amen. <clears throat> Others are having academic challenges. And Father, they have also come and I commit them in your hands. Others have had time to understand calculations. Others have had time to understand English. Others are struggling in class, but they have come this morning believing that you are the source of knowledge and source of wisdom. I pray that you make them away in Jesus' name. Amen. Others have different kinds of challenges. Others have misunderstandings with their friends, with their teachers. Father, I pray that there will be this unlimited peace from Jesus flooding within their lives. Father, I pray that each one of us will experience your peace. Yes. Peace that comes from above. That we will have this peace in class, at home, and everywhere we are as we enjoy the beauty of following Jesus. Thank you for your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So I uplift these young ones in your hands. Lord, come quickly and take us home. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For our closing song, let us all stand and sing our theme song, I have decided to follow Jesus.
Shall we all bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have bestowed upon us. May we apply all the lessons that we have heard from our speaker from today and apply it from our daily lives. And as we depart, may we use our lessons as our guide. Forgive us for all of the sins that we committed against thee and guide us, O Lord. We ask for your knowledge and wisdom, and this is all I ask in prayer. Amen.